Hey everybody, Steve Almquist, I'm the High School Ministry Director here at UALC and this is the online team training. Um, we were trying not to do this, we're trying to get everybody together in person, but uh, that just didn't work out this year. And so anyway, we are doing this for some of you who just couldn't make it to those, but we really want to make sure you're connected with this, that you're a part of this. This is important stuff to learn. And so uh, please do watch it all the way through. There are prompts throughout this and stuff that basically things, places where you text us and stuff like that, just so um, it's a way for us to take a uh, role, but it's also a way just to connect with you and, and uh, just that we're on the same page as far as the training goes. So, yeah, our heart with this is that we want students to be in a great place to be a part of what God's doing both in your life and in, through your life. There's, this is, this is going to be a great week. So, all right, well, let's start first of all with just a little way to get to know you. Also, this is, like I said, this is a way for us to take role. So, basically, what we'd like you to do is on your phone, basically, what is something, find something in your room or whatever or something, what is some item that really would tell us a lot about you? What is something that's like, like for me, I love Colorado, so I might have gotten a Colorado flag, I'm from Colorado originally, and so I might have taken a picture of that and sent that saying, hey, Colorado's a part of me, I love that. I love ATVs, and so maybe I ought to take a picture of one of the ATVs or something like that, but what is something that would tell us about you Text that to this number right here. I think you can see all that, 614-398-7814. Text that to Mary Kate. Take, text the picture of what it is. Tell us why that's significant and just text your name with it as well. That way we know you guys are here and are part of this. This is the way we, we get you registered and we know that you've done the training. So again, find something that's unique to you right now. Go find it and text that to Mary Kate at this number, 614-398-7814. And just, yeah, text her that picture and that's a great way for us to stay connected with you guys and know you're a part of teen training. We're excited you guys are at this today. So. Um, this year's theme, if you have not heard, is God's treasure, and uh, basically, we are God's treasure. He loves us so much. He cares about us so much. He's done everything to be in relationship with us. We were created for relationship with Him. Our sins screwed that up. We messed that up with Him, and that could have been the end of it. That could have just been, you know, I gave you a chance. I wanted to be in relationship with you. You messed it up, and so we're apart from Him. But fortunately, you know what? We know through the Old Testament there were all these different ways that you could try to somehow mend that relationship and all of them just continue to prove that we are incapable of saving ourselves. And so again, God could have said, I gave you a lot of chances, you guys blew it again. But he does the ultimate thing. He sends his son Jesus to, to live for us, to die for us, to pay the price for our sin that you know, through faith in him, belief in him, we're able to have that right relationship with God. So clearly, somebody who goes to those lengths is saying that there is treasure in who I am, that I am of great value, and that he was willing to do everything. And we want you to understand that. We want kids to understand that. And every day we're going to unpack a little bit more of what that is through the parables of Jesus. And we'll get to those a little bit later in the training. But anyway, we want you guys to make sure uh, you know that that's the heart of the message. So. So a few things about VBS. First of all, the number one thing that we think at UALC and with VBS is that we, um, we know that God is going to do something incredible. And, and listen, we do an amazing job at, at Vacation Bible School at UALC. I mean, writing our own songs, the, the, the way with emotions, and just the passion that this church puts into VBS and all this stuff. And we could sit there and go, this is our way to showcase who we are and show everyone how amazing we are and the things we've done. But that's not why we do this. We do this because we believe that God is going to show up. God is here. He's going to do something incredible and we get to be a part of it. And so we want to give him our all in that. And so just remember that, that, that as amazing as VBS is for just the fun of it, the, the songs, all that stuff, our heart ultimately is that God, we, we believe he's going to do something incredible. And I think he could do something incredible in your life, in my life, um, and especially in the lives of those kids that show up next week. So that's pretty spectacular. We get to be a part of that. And teen helpers, you guys are a major part of that happening. So God is going to do something incredible. And we believe that. So this year's verse um, is uh, 1 Peter 2.9. And it's your God's special treasure. 
so that you can give him praise. God brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So again, we were made to worship him. We were made for relationship with him and to worship him. And we were such a special treasure to him again that he would give everything he had for us to have that right relationship with him and to praise him. One thing we want to remind, we want to always remember is that we are not doing VBS or we don't come to church. We aren't reading the Bible, all these things to gain relationship with him. It's not how I can be the best I can be. How can I live the best life that somehow God's going to accept me and, and allow me to be a part of his kingdom? No, it's the fact that what makes, what brings us into relationship with him is what Jesus did. And so um, that we are his special treasure. And, and so the fact that he would go that to the lengths he did to have relationship with me tells me that rather than I'm serving at VBS because I want to earn my salvation, I'm serving at VBS because I have my salvation and I can't believe I have it. I can't believe that God loves me enough to, to give his life for me, to live for me. And that's incredible. And so that's why I serve. And so I come because I know I'm his treasure. And out of that, you know what? To give him praise. Um, yeah, he brought me out of darkness and we're living in a wonderful light. And again, our heart is that next week that we're a part of reflecting that and a part of hopefully student kids, students, adults, finding this out to be true, that they are God's treasure. And maybe for the first time, and we get to be a part of it. That's pretty spectacular. So um, I hope we take that seriously. Okay, so another verse that I think is important for us as we think about next week is 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3. This is this chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians is like the love chapter. This is, this is an amazing passage of scripture, but this is, these first three verses really say a lot. It says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardships that I may boast but do not have any love, I gain nothing. I hope that that is where we serve from next week. I hope that each of us is coming that we serve out of love. Again, not because I have to do this thing, but because I, 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 I want to be representing just to love these kids, to love the kids, to love the people I work with, uh, that I love God. And this is why I serve. This is why I serve. It's from a place of love as opposed to a place of, you know, doing this because I have to do this or something like this. I hope that we do it out of love. Our heart matters. And again, it's saying here, you know, the ability to have faith that can move mountains is incredible. I mean, we, we all, I, if I think about what I would hope is I would hope that my faith was one that could move mountains, that no matter what stood in my way, that I had a faith that believed that God could remove whatever the obstacle, he could do it. And yet it's saying, if I believe all that stuff and yet in my heart, I don't have love. If I sit there and somebody I know is really sick and I'm going, God, I really hope you heal them. You know, I'm just, I'm, maybe I'm tired of hearing about what they're complaining about. No, if I sit there and I go, God, this person is somebody you love. And this person's got this thing in their life they're going through. God, I pray that you would just remove that mountain. That you'd remove that thing that's in there. And I hope that it's out of love that I do that stuff. And so I hope that next week we serve out of a place of love. This is also another passage of scripture, Colossians 3, 23 and 24, that I think is an amazing passage of scripture. For me, this is a verse that always brings me back to what really matters. Okay? Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Next week, you guys are going to come, you're going to serve. Day one, Monday, it's awesome. We get to see everybody. We're, oh man, this is what we've been waiting for. Amazing VBS again. So excited about it. It's going to be incredible. Um, but you know, as the week goes on, Tuesday, it's a little bit, all of a sudden that, that time of getting up at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. is feeling a little different. Tuesday feels a little harder. Wednesday feels even harder. Kids come, they're tired. They're worn out. They're not as fun as they were on Monday. They're not as excited as they were on Wednesday as they were on Monday. And suddenly this thing becomes a little less fun and it's easy to kind of slip into this place of just going through the motions. And again, our heart of love and also this of realizing that, man, I'm here to serve Christ. I want to serve God with everything I have to the best of my ability. 
as tired as I am and all that stuff. I'm not saying we fake that and just act, you know, but at the same time, I want to make sure kids have a great time. A kid who's struggling, I want to make sure he still has a great day. How can I be a help, part of helping him? And I'm serving God in everything that I do with this. Yes, I'm serving this kid. And I hope we see this kid and don't just see him as a project or something like this. He's a kid that God loves and I want to love him. So, but I'm loving him in the, in the same way that I love Christ, that I'm loving him in that. So um, just to keep us focused on that, I think that's something that's always important for us to do. Okay, one of the biggest things with VBS, as you guys know, that we do an amazing job with here is the songs of VBS. And so right now in this video, there are going to be some songs that uh, Esther Gilliam and Angie Gilliam, they are going to be a part of teaching us and uh, Tally Caruso's in a few of these as well. But uh, they're going to be teaching us some of these songs. This is so you guys are better ready when these songs come up to help kids know the motions. This just gets you a leg ahead. So watch these songs, watch these uh, there is a prompt at the end of the songs. There's two different sets of songs, and at the end of that, to say, what is my favorite song out of this? So please make sure that you watch these songs and are familiar with it. So familiarize yourself with it. Here are the songs with Angie, Esther, and Tally Caruso.
and lost in doubt, you turn to the Father. Without delay, you pause and pray. When you're so far from home and all alone, you turn to the Father. Without delay, you pause and pray. So one of my favorite things about the music and all with the VBS is when I first came here, I'll be honest with you, I was that adult that was going, look at all these motions they're doing. I'm not going to do this. This is for kids. This is not something that I do. We're not supposed to do this as adults. And I remember looking around the first year and I realized I think I was the only adult in the whole room that was not doing all the motions. So learn the motions because you will stand out in this if you don't know these things. So familiarize yourself with the motions. It's good to know all that. And it really helps these songs to communicate uh, the truth that we're looking for in those. So please make sure you know those things. Okay. So again, back to God's treasure and just a few more, just a couple other lessons with this I want us to be aware of. Um, first of all, I want, you to, I want to read 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All of God's word, all the things we read in the Bible are so important. 
and they're so valuable. Man, they are God breathe. These are things that God spoke out through different different authors, which is incredible. This is part of the whole amazing thing of the Bible that is God spoke through these different authors that were a part of writing the Bible. All these things still play into this amazing story and they then they support one another and, and it's incredible. But there it's useful for teaching. Things that we're going to do, it's useful for correcting us and 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 training us to be in right standing with God and to be and to, and to to, to reflect him more than being in right standing with him, but to reflect uh, who he is in our lives. And so that is what we're a part of sharing next week. This stuff is what we are a part of. And I hope that you guys understand when I say that all of it is useful. Again, it's useful for you and me, not just for the kids we're going to be teaching, but there is scripture here and things that are being taught in this that I hope our hearts are open to, that our hearts are softened to, that I go, God, speak to me. And man, if this is useful, make it useful in my life and, and make it something that, that touches me. And part of that is, why does it matter? Because I firmly believe that all scripture, if we think about what the theme is for next week, all script, scripture is God breathed and is treasure for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Man, this is treasure we want them to find and it's treasure that I want to find next week. So I really hope that for each of us, we will make that a priority. Now, how many of you guys were a part of going and watching the eclipse a few months back? You know, I'll be honest, I've lived through several eclipses in my life and I remember the one in 2017. I remember I was at Ikea uh, having lunch when it happened and I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be amazing. I had these memories of what it was and I remember thinking in my mind, this is what I was going to see. And I remember I got outside and it was kind of cloudy and I could hardly see. I didn't have the glasses, all this stuff. There were so many things about it that were just really disappointing that I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't thinking it was that big of a deal at first. But then, you know, I caught the hype. Everything, everyone was getting wound up about it. It was pretty exciting. So I did get the glasses and I decided I was, I was just outside of the optimal viewing Vent ground. I can't remember what they call that exactly, but anyway, the, the, the optimal place where it would be uh, complete darkness. And so I drove out maybe like 10 miles uh, out past Hilliard and wanted to get out somewhere where I could be in complete darkness. And it was incredible. It was amazing to be a part of that and to see that. And, you know, the thing is that I want to remind us is that the sun didn't change. The sun didn't go away. The sun didn't suddenly have this shade that it pulled down so that it was a little less light shining on us. The sun never changed. The sun was there, shining as bright as ever, but this unique thing happened where the moon somehow passed between the sun and the earth, and it just lined up perfectly, obviously, and it created this incredible thing. But in the way of that sunlight was the moon. And the one thing I wanna, I wanna make sure of is that we don't get in the way next week of what God wants to do. God is God, God is amazing, we're not changing him. We're really not gonna be able to blot out him and stuff like this, but there are some ways that we can have an input an impact on what happens. Sometimes if I'm not in the right spot, if I'm out horsing around and I'm not a part of helping these kids to get the most out of it, even in rec time, Rec time may seem like it's a time where as a, as a teen leader, I can relax. I don't need to do all the games and all this stuff. But you being a part of the games and being connected and all this stuff helps them to stay connected even in the next things as well. So everything we do, I hope that we determine, I don't want to get in the way of what God is doing in a kid's life or in my life. And so I'm going to commit to doing everything I can to just being a part of this and really tuning in and being a part of it with VBS. So it's very important. So just make sure that we do that. All right. Here is our second song time with Esther and with Angie. And I believe Tally's in these more on this one. So anyway, let's follow these. Let's listen to these. Again, learn these motions. You will be the only one not doing it. You don't want to be that person that's standing there with your hands to your side. You also don't want to be the person, uh, we'll call him Steve, like last year. Uh, this guy, just, I don't know, he could not get the motions down to the oasis. He thought he could, but he really couldn't. So make sure you're not the one that's getting mixed up and messed up. No the actions to these songs because it's really important for you to not stand out like a goob and it's also important for the kids to see and learn what it is and they're a lot of fun. I love these things and so it's great to be a part of it and do it. So right now watch these songs and we'll come back. Again after this is where you will get to text again uh, I believe this time to me uh, what is your favorite song that we are doing this year. So please look at them closely so you know which song is your favorite. Be the smartest and the fastest and 
the strongest. I try my hardest just to get all their attention. Show them I'm a treasure, but all that she's sending and chasing the spotlight, comparing who's bright. But, but, but I'd rather sit tight, cause God, you love me and I am so precious in your sight. With you, I can dance just like a fool, but you can't. You can't.
But I hope you guys had fun with it, and again, learn these motions. If, if you can, go back and familiarize yourself with them. Uh, they, they just know these songs. Also, so text me, Steve, 614-448-8499, 614-448-8499. What is your favorite song that we did? Just text that to me so that we know, again, that you're part of this stuff. We know that you're watching this, and we'd love to just hear what your favorite song is. That helps us in knowing in future years, yeah, they really love this song. Yeah, that song never came up anywhere. So um, do that for us if you would. Okay, so what I want to do is we're going to move into a time of looking at the different parables of each day. Each day, there are some different parables that we're going to go through. And so five parables, five days, and I want us to look at those. And so here are some of, first of all, those parables. So the parables, here is day one. Day one is the parable of the dinner guests. And this is found in Luke 14, 15 to 24. So listen to this. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I just have bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Um... Please excuse me. Still another said, I got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, uh, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country, country, country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Okay, so each day there's going to be a theme. And so that day, the parable of the guests, the theme is that I am God's treasure. God wants all of us to be at that table. Obviously, he sent, a, he sent out an invite to people, people who he wanted to be at that table. Those people refused. Those people had other things that were more important. And so God said, this table, I want it to be as full as can be, and started reaching out to whoever would come. That's God's table. His table is open to all. He wants everyone to come to this. But... There's that invite that's out there. People need to be, they, they need to come to the table. There needs to be faith that is found. Faith that, the, you know, is what gives us a seat at that table. And so our prayer is that, yeah, the kids will know that I am God's treasure. He wants to eat with me. He wants to sit with me and be a part of my life. That is day one. Day two is the parable of the lost sheep. This is probably one of my favorite parables in the whole Bible. This is Luke 15, 1 to 7. It says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. The parable of the lost sheep. The message that day is that God seeks treasured people. Yeah, he leaves everything else that one was worth going after. He would look high and low to go and find that one that was lost. If God And that, that lost may be one of us. Maybe you here again that are a part of this have never really um, put your faith in Jesus. You've never accepted the gift of salvation that he has for you. And my prayer is that this is the time that it happens. But we want kids to understand that Jesus is seeking after them. That when they're lost and we're not in relationship with him, he wants that relationship and he's looking for us. He he's wants that to happen. And we need to be praying that those kids who are lost are found next week. We want to be a part of seeing God do something incredible, like we said. All right, day three, the parable of the lost son. This is probably one of the most famous and well-known ones. 
Uh, we talked about it today at our training. Several kids, students said that this was their favorite. Luke 15, 11 to 24. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out as a citizen of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. Uh, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When, it came, when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up, went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. For him, he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. God's forgiveness is our treasure. Us being forgiven of that sin that separates us from him, that is the true treasure. That is, it's, the gospel is that yes, that's, that sin that separated us wasn't removed because I've got this long list of things that somehow I managed to do or maybe didn't manage to do, but I received the treasure because of his forgiveness. And that's incredible. And it's incredible when you hear this story and just the open arms that are there waiting to me. All right, so that is day three. Day four is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Oh, another favorite, another great one. Uh, all right, on one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. And Jesus said, yes, you answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he came to he passed by on the other side. See to a Levite when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, a Samaritan was like this, they were, they, they were not, they were not, they were like enemies. These were people that did not get along. This is the last person that would stop. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring it on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, brought him to an inn to take care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Yeah, it's easy for us. When we think about loving our neighbor, it's easy to think of the people that are easy to love. It's easy to think about those that we go, this person matters to me, they're a good friend of mine, they've always been nice to me. Maybe if you, if you go to your physical neighbors in your neighborhood, there's neighbors that you go, that's a great guy. I love hanging out with Scott. I love hanging out with uh, Rob. These are great people. But then maybe you sit there and you go, ah, oh, there's a guy down there on the corner. I don't know much about him. He sometimes, I don't know if, I don't know if he's one, but this is going, this is the one, this is who... God could look at us and in that same way go, this is somebody that, you know, they're over there. I'm going to just walk around them. Um, and yet God goes, this is who I stop 
And so again, the message is of the parable of the Good Samaritan, God saves his treasured people. We are his treasured people. Every person there is his treasured people. We, he, he gave everything to have relationship with us. And so um, we need to reflect that. That's an important story, an important part of day four. All part of being God's treasure. All right, day five is the parable of the hidden treasure. Just so you know, if you're ever asked to read these stories somewhere throughout the week and you're going, I don't like to read as much, man, choose day five. You got one verse as opposed to like 10. It's really easy. Anyway, but day five, Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Okay, the parable of hidden treasure. Yes, the point of that day is God treasures us. But it's also that God is this treasure. This is the greatest thing there is. There's nothing more important. When you understand the love that God has for us, nothing is more important than that. This is incredible treasure that I value, that I cherish. But it's a kind of treasure that I go, I want others to know this. I want them to understand how amazing this is. And we get to be a part of presenting that treasure and helping kids understand that they are his treasure. God treasures us. He wants that relationship with them. And that's, that's a part of knowing this treasure of God that we have. It's, it's an incredible opportunity to serve. It's an incredible opportunity to help kids and to hear the message of Jesus and how much he loves them and how treasured and loved they are. Um, remember that for ourselves as well. Don't let that just be said and then we just move on and don't be amazed by that because it truly is incredible that God loves us at that level. Okay, so again, like I said, today, what is your favorite parable in the Bible stories of this week? Again, the five were uh, the parable of the dinner guests, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost son, the parable of the good Samaritan, the parable of the hidden treasure. Which, ones of the, which one of these was your favorite parable? Which one maybe just really connects with you? Like I said, my favorite was the parable of the lost sheep. I just always love that. I think it's an amazing picture. So what I want you to do though is the text, the title that, of that parable to 614-398-7814. 614-398-7814. Looks like a one. 614-398-7814. That's Mary Kate's number. Text her, again, your name and what is the favorite parable that you heard out of those uh, from that we're going to be presenting next week. So please text her that. Again, this is part of the attendance in this. It's part of being a part of this whole thing. And uh, so, yeah, please do that. Uh, yeah, these are these are... Incredible messages, you guys. These are amazing things you get to be part of. I just want to say that, that first and foremost, that I so appreciate each one of you students being willing to give up your week next week to be a part of serving kids, to be a part of serving here at UALC. You guys are amazing. Um, yeah, we, we go to the links of doing this video and all this stuff because we hope it works out for you to be a part of Vacation Bible School next week. It's going to be great with the young kids, big kids. Uh, a lot of kids will be in this building and a lot of kids you get to hear about them being God's treasure and that is awesome. So you, we get to do that. Um, that said, I just want to close in a time of prayer. Um, the, the question is, what do we want to see God do? And what do we want to see God do? And, and I hope we come back to that original statement we had that I, I hope we want to see God do something incredible. I really hope that that is our heart, that I want to see you, God, do something just spectacular and incredible. And, and God, that I get to be a part of that is amazing. So let's pray and uh, just ask God to do that. God, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of Vacation Bible School. I thank you for the opportunity to uh, just to... Uh, work alongside you next week. God, I pray that you would just be with each one of these students. Just give them your strength. Um, God, just help them to just uh, be where they need to be. God, let none of us get in the way of what you're doing. God, I pray that we would just be a part of helping present 
the gospel. We'd be a part of presenting the kids this message that they are treasured by you. You love them incredibly and want a relationship with them. I pray that everything we do helps them to see that. Thanks for these students. Thanks for their commitment to, to volunteer and just to be a part of this. We love you and give this to you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. God's treasure next week, UALC, BBS. There is a training on Sunday. Remember, that is required. These things are all required. That one will not be video. That one will be one you really need to be at. That is Sunday at 1230 here in the sanctuary. 1230 to 130 is one part of it. That is going to be with Melissa and the kids ministry team. Uh, some specific things you need to learn there. And then we'll move into the teen training from 130 to 230. Specific things that you as teens need to know, special rooms we've got for you guys, places where you can hang out, snacks, all that stuff, things to bring where you can put your stuff and all that. So it's very important to Sunday be there from 1230 to 2.30 and get that training. Hey, thank you so much. We're excited to meet you guys. If we haven't met you before, we're excited to be a part of working alongside and what God's going to do in Vacation Bible School 2024.